I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about dynamic tables, progress button styles, spin kit, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a project called Dynatable. Now, this is a really interesting project that uses HTML5 and JSON to add interactivity to your tables. What kind of interactivity? Well, mostly sorting and data loading. So what at first appears like a very simple project on the site, look at that dinosaur, isn't that cute? See, it's a dynamic table or dyna, like dinosaur oh. table. So it's shaped like a table, but it's also shaped like a dinosaur. That's why the project's so complex. I mean, it just has a lot of depth there. I could never be a designer. No. I, would, I couldn't think like that. Mm. So anyway, they've got a, a great demo first up, and you can see there's uh, 10, 10 records in here. It's showing 1 to 10 of 186 of them. We can automatically sort by rank, uh, alphabetically by country, dollars, years, all that. We can choose how many of these at a time we want to show. And this is all done very quickly and easily in JavaScript for us. So let me go back to 10 items there. Now, how do we do that? Well, we just call the Dynatable attribute. Now, what does this actually do? Well, it looks at the data inside of your table and attempts to normalize it into a JSON object. Once it's normalized, it can be operated upon and then it can be written and rendered back into the DOM. Now, why in the world would you want to operate on data that's already on your web page? Well, you can do really, really interesting things like sorting and even fetching more data. You don't have to have data already in the page on a table. You can get it via Ajax and just call in a ton of different sorting functions in here. Now, here's a, we're not gonna go over everything, but here's something that was um, pretty interesting. You can, do basic sorting, and you can also sort by any values or write your own custom sort functions. This one I found really interesting. They've got these this list of dinosaurs right here. Now, if you see, I click the sort A to Z button, and as you would expect, it gets sorted alphabetically, but I can also sort it by color. Whoa, you can't just do that with a regular table, can you? No. How do they do that? Well, they have a custom sort function that you can bind to the data table, and uh, they're, they're leaving the whole thing like, okay, we're going to assume that we have a get average RGB function written somewhere else. Uh, and actually, last week we talked about a plugin for doing dynamic backgrounds, so you really could get that average RGB from a different JavaScript library. And then just do an RGB sort function, put it right in the table. Anyway, there are just a ton of different things that you can do with this plugin. Uh, it's open source. Check it out in the show notes that you can get to at youtube.com slash gotreehouse or search for us on iTunes at The Treehouse Show. That is pretty amazing. Well, next up are some progress button styles from the CodeDrops blog. Really cool blog. You should definitely check that out. Let's look at these buttons. So if I click on one of these, whoa, look at that. It what? fills horizontal, vertically. It can shrink horizontally and vertically, but check this out. You can actually do some 3D effects. So if I click on these, they will actually rotate in 3D and it will show the progress on another side of the button. You can do similar things with all of these. There's a couple different effects that you can check out here. Pretty amazing stuff, not a whole lot to say about it, but if you do need to create some kind of loading effect for a button, this is definitely some pretty amazing HTML and CSS that you should check out. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Next up, we got some good news. The 300 millisecond tap delay has gone away in mobile versions of Chrome or Android. What? Let's high five. HTML high five. Wow. Why'd they do that? I don't actually know. It doesn't say in the article about why they did it, but uh, it does have a demo of the tap being removed. We're not going to show it. You can, you can watch that on your own time. Um, if you are not using Chrome for Android version 32, we have talked about previously different projects that can remove the fast click delay. Uh, and they have a link to it down there at the bottom, fast click by FT Labs. Anyway, that is something that we've been talking about for a long time on here is removing that delay. So it's great to see that it's actually finally gone. 
Um, you know, removing the delay is kind of one of the big differentiators between making native applications and HTML5 applications feel different on mobile devices. So good work, Chrome, for Android version 32. We're watching you. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is this amazing piece of CSS called SpinKit. So once again, if you need to create a loading animation, if you have some JavaScript that's maybe fetching something or you're uploading a file, you can display one of these loading animations. Or you just want people to think something's way more complicated than it really is. Like some AI is actually calculating, but yeah. really it's just a state machine and not really that complex. We've oh, all, yeah. We've all been there. Yeah, I know how that right? is. That's my, right? my Friday night. All yeah. right. Well, now you can go ahead and do that in pure CSS, just like those buttons that we were looking at previously. So here is a little spinner here. It looks kind of like a spinner you might find in Windows 8, pretty nifty. There's one that looks like some kind of sound wave or something, that's pretty cool. There's some horizontal bars there. Look, that one is actually spinning two cubes in like this like binary star system or something. <laughs> is this the future? It's amazing, I know, tomorrow is today. Wow. Anyway, there's a bunch of cool little spinners here in SpinKit and you can check it out on GitHub. Very cool stuff. Really nice. Also on GitHub is a really cool plugin called jQuery Audit. Now what this does is it adds another little tab to the Chrome Dev Tools that lets you inspect the state of jQuery on DOM elements and objects. Wow. Uh, so what, what exactly does that mean? Well, you can check out an object, right? You've got this jQuery Audit, and you can grab the element and it will show you any events that are attached to it. Uh, any delegators it has, what happens when the key, down, key goes down, mouse out, mouse over. It'll also show you any internal data inside of the object. Not too much to say, but this is just a, a really, really great piece of code. Also gives you access to the body and window objects to inspect just what's going on with jQuery and any, anything that's been attached to it. It's a great project. Check it out. Very cool stuff. One thing that we should point out is that this is actually different than the audits panel. This adds a tab to the elements panel over on the right hand side along with styles, you know, properties, DOM breakpoints, and all that stuff that you'd expect there. But yeah, very cool project. Well, next up is zoomerang.js, and this allows you to zoom elements on your page. Oh, I thought it was like two of the Flash rogues combined into one. Nope, not quite. Uh, it's a drop in library that allows your users to zoom in on almost any element on your existing page. No setup or ar arbitrary styling is required. What does that mean? Well, if I go ahead and click on this, whoa, what the heck what? is going on? It just zooms perfectly right in just like that. Are we on a web page or in a tunnel? And it works even if you resize or scroll your page. Oh, look at that. So if we click on it and we scroll the page, it will stay with us and when I click it, it will go right back down to where it was originally. Pretty amazing project, yeah. and you should definitely check that out on GitHub. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Freestyle. Now, Nick and I aren't going to break out in the song. No, this is basically um, kind of bootstrapping your apps, but your native iPhone apps as if you were writing CSS and SAS. Really, really interesting project. So. It gives you a ton of options, and this is basically for designers. They say to think of it as bootstrap for native applications. That means that you can actually style your iOS apps using CSS and SAS. It uses the Pix8 framework, and that is completely free to download. Um, you can download Freestyle also over on GitHub. Now, the Pix8 framework is pretty interesting. Uh, it works on iOS. And I believe they also have some Android um, projects as well. Uh, Pix8 has just a ton of different things that you can do. Um, it, it is a paid service, but you know, if you're getting started and you kind of want to lay the groundwork for an application, maybe get up and running with just some rapid ideas to see how the app is going to play out and your developers and designers know CSS and SAS, could be a good option to check out. Yeah, very cool. So that's about all we have uh, for this episode. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I'm at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. If you want more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. And search for us in iTunes at The Treehouse Show. And don't forget to rate us. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, 
web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And we'll see you next time.